International Surgical Missions is based in Pueblo. With help from Colorado Technical University, about 20 doctors, nurses, and other volunteers shed blood, sweat, and tears as we help the people of Allen on the island of Samar. It was a long journey, but worth every second. After more than 19 hours of flying time, plus layovers in Los Angeles and Hong Kong, the team finally arrived to the Philippines. We checked into our hotel and explored Manila nightlife. Across the country, you can find English everywhere. It's on billboards in the cities. It's spoken in the government, in schools, even on broadcast TV. But on each island, there's a different dialect. Here in the capital city of Manila, they speak Tagalog. On the island of Samar, they speak Warai. There's more than 100 dialects across the country. The next morning, we loaded up inside a twin-engine prop plane and watched as islands and jungle passed below. Some were nervous, some anxious, but there was no turning back. Our international surgical mission had just begun. As soon as we touched down on the island of Samar, we received a hero's welcome. Thank you. With Thank decorative you. necklaces, waves, smiles, and lots and lots of pictures. One more, one more, sorry. Throughout the mission, we were treated like royalty, like celebrities. The governor of Samar hosted a dinner and dance. The nearby town of San Isidro served us an outdoor banquet. And after a week of work, our hosts treated us to a day of relaxation. Don't worry, if you're here with us, you're always in good hands. It's hard to believe this is the third world when you're surrounded by paradise, but the Republic of the Philippines is made up of more than 7,000 islands, and that number can fluctuate as there's high tide and low tide. Because they're surrounded by water, fishing industry is vital to the economy. Island is very progressive because it is the center of trade and industry. Besides fishing, Filipinos can also make a pretty decent living in agriculture. And the most common products across the country are bananas, mangoes, and especially here in Samar, rice. Every Filipino eats rice daily. Coconut trees are another important source of income. We call it a tree of life, because considering that from, from the trunk to the fruits, we can use it. Ironically, in a country with so much agriculture, most families still struggle to put food on the table. The poverty here is overwhelming. So that is why there is always that aspiration to work harder. So all across the island, there are homes that line the streets. And I want to give you a tour inside one typical home. There's a crowd here gathered gawking at this American who wants to see inside. But uh, this man says he, he built this home himself, and he lives here with a family of five with his wife and his three children. And uh, we'll take you inside now. There's a, a step up here to this room, and five people sleep in this one space every night. They have no bed, just a mat to sleep on the floor. And then if we come down here, uh, you can see that they have some dressing area, not many clothes or shoes. And back in this area, they have a kitchen, a small kitchen with some plates, but no running water. It's very dark, and at night they use uh, oil lamps to be able to see. Here are the wash basins where they take baths and wash their hands and their, and their plates after eating. And out back, like many families, they have a pig. Uh, and back here they have a space where they use the restroom and also shower if they need to. The community might be poor, but the local priest says his parishioners are rich in faith. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of God. In other words, uh, the Filipinos, I the Filipinos themselves identify with the mission of the church. Across the Philippines, there's a variety of Christian religions. There are some Muslims in the country, in the southern region, but for the vast majority of the Filipinos, they're practicing Catholics. Today in Allen at St. James Church, they're celebrating a festival of Santo Nino. The festival commemorates the discovery of the Philippines and the arrival of Christianity. Catholic missionaries once used this image of Jesus as a child to teach the concept of Christianity. There was no priest, there was no catechist, but only the, the image of Santo Nino. It became the possession of the newly uh, converted Christians. Our surgical mission at the hospital in Allen was not faith-based, but it was a spiritual experience. We gave Filipinos medical help and they gave us perspective. By learning a little about their culture, we learned a lot about our own. And most important, we experienced heartfelt hospitality and discovered new friendships. We do not want to have enemies. We want to have friends. You know, there's a saying, if you give love, you will get much more love in return. So perhaps that is what we are doing. 
Over the next month, I'll share more stories from my experience in the Philippines. I'll show you the difficult working conditions at the hospital and the unbelievable medical conditions of the patients. I'll introduce the doctors, nurses, and others who sacrifice so much for each mission. And I'll bring you the story of a young girl whose life was changed forever after her surgery. Watch Helping and Healing International Surgical Missions in the Philippines every Tuesday night at 9 on Fox 21 News. You can also find in-depth stories on my blog at fox21news.com. Just click the Exclusives tab. For Fox 21 News, I'm Mike Kinnean.